I want to give simple instructions on how to be a good father. And this came about uh, by a young man asking me uh, this past week, uh, what does it take to be a man and what does it take to be a father? Um, unfortunately, we're living in times where there are so many young men that's growing up in single parent homes without the presence of a man. So they're going out into the world with no idea on what it takes to be a man, nor how to be a man, especially in the climate that we're living in today. Now, there's a saying where it says that women cannot raise a boy to be a man. I'll be making a video on that pretty soon. And I think that a woman can raise a boy to be a man, but she's very limited, which also falls in line with what I'm going to say today. Now, I recommend that every young man should read Proverbs, starting at the, at the first chapter. The first chapter of Proverbs deal with young men that's growing up and how young men should conduct themselves. There are no real instructions on how to be a man or how to be a father. Manhood comes about by example. The example that you see if you grow up in the home with your dad from cutting the grass, fixing cars, just simple instruction that your dad gives you from himself. It's not like he read a book because it doesn't matter how many books you read or how much advice people give you. Man is something that you have to grow into, right? You hear women that's constantly attacking um, a, a, a man's or a young boy's manhood. You're supposed to be a man. This is how a man's supposed to conduct themselves. There's no real instructions on how to be a man, just like there's no real instructions on how to be a parent. It's all on the job training. It's by experience. So my advice would be to read the first chapter of Proverbs, read the entire Proverbs if you, if you can handle it, but read the first chapter of Proverbs. Now, what I said to the young man was as long as you do the right thing, as long as you continue doing what is right by the child and by the child's mother, you'll be okay. Already he's making preparations for the baby. He bought a stroller, he bought a car seat, he bought the clothing, he bought the milk. So as of now, he's doing everything that he's supposed to do. Is he supposed to do that by himself because of the fact that he is now the man of the house? No, it takes two. See, you're married. So both parties, the man and the woman, have to contribute to the household. Make sure that your home is safe. Make sure that your child feels safe. Try to try. Sometimes it's not easy, but try your best, try your hardest not to raise your child in a toxic environment. Meaning you and the mother arguing, you saying very mean things to the moms, the mom saying mean things to you because you can speak things and once those words leave from your mouth, you can't take them back. I don't care how much you apologize and say that you were angry and you didn't mean that. You have to know or gain control over your tongue. And like the scripture says, nobody can, your, your tongue is an unruly member. It cannot be tamed. So as long as you're doing the right things and always put God first. And there's people that may reject that because they don't believe in God, but that's okay if that's what you choose. But my recommendation is always put God first in everything you do. 
and you will always end up on the right side. Always end up on the right side. Not saying that you're not going to hit a couple of bumps in the road here or there. That's going to happen. But when it comes to manhood, even fatherhood, it's not so much as what you deal with or what you have to face in life, but it's how you deal with it. It's how you handle it. Either you going to allow it to handle you or you're going to um, handle that. I mean, cutting the grass, this is stuff you've seen your father do as you grow up. And I've noticed my sons, okay? I have a son that moved down south and he's got his family now. My older son, he's got his family here. And I've noticed that many of the things that they do in their households, they got it from home. See, when it comes to like taking care of the lawn, doing things around the house, they're only doing, their mind automatically goes back to how dad th did things in the house. And now I see my sons doing the same thing, especially my younger son. I see him doing the exact same things that he saw me do around the house. See, that's why it's important to grow up in the house with a father or have an uncle, have a cousin. Have somebody to instruct you. Now, there are those that can give you wrong instruction because you have so many dudes, especially in the black community, that's raised by older men in the street. And every now and then you may find one of these old OGs that will give you right information, that will give you right knowledge, tell you to stay in school, tell you to do the right thing, take care of that child. And even if you and the, and the, and the child's mother don't get along, be there for that child. It's vitally important for you not to walk out on that child. See, now I hear people talk about generational wealth. The best type of generational wealth to have is a generation of fatherhood. You be the example that you want your child to be. Be the example that you didn't have growing up. And so when your son grows up, your son would know how to treat women. Your son would know how to handle business in his household. And then when his son see that, now his son will mimic what he saw his father do. See, and that's why we see so many young men grow up and don't respect women because they never had that male figure around their home to see how you're supposed to handle women. How are you supposed to talk to women, right? How are you supposed to treat women, even when you don't get along? So when it comes to being a good father or good, being a man, it's all about taking responsibility for your own actions. Don't run out on choices that you made in life. When things get hard, do not run. You stay right there. I recall back in the time when I was growing up, you had men that spent months away, maybe sometimes years from the house, um, taking care of the family. And they had very little to work with. In this day and time, so many men are controlled by women not having enough or feeling like she don't have enough. Nobody really learns the lesson of being content with a little bit. See, a little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. I had to throw that out there. So if you learn how to manage a little bit, then as time go on, when you start growing in life and start increasing in wealth, then you'll have some basic knowledge on how not to squander your money. You take care of business first. You put aside money. You prepare. You think way ahead. You always stay six steps ahead. Always stay ahead of the game. And you can't lose. Think in the future for your children. So being a father, 
raising a boy to be a man, the only instructions, the real instructions they have is the example that their father set for them or the example that men in their life set for them. But even the men in your life, when you see them doing the wrong thing, see right and wrong is never going to change. Wrong is gonna always be wrong. I don't care how many flowers or how they decorate it and make wrong look good. Wrong is always wrong because that wrong and that evil is all a part of the universe. It's immutable laws that's already set in action. You reap what you sow. So you know in your heart of hearts when something is not right. I don't care how much they tell you it's right to do wrong. Wrong is always going to be wrong and right is going to always be right. Always keep your promises that you make to your children. There are so many children that grow up and they have stories because you think because they're so small that they don't know or they don't remember, but children remember. I remember everything I saw my father do growing up and how he reacted towards me and how he reacted towards my moms. I remember those things, right? So always be an example, do the right thing, man. Be the example that you didn't have growing up. As long as you do the right thing. And like I said, I, I recommend you read the first chapter of Proverbs. Read that whole book of Proverbs if you can. And that gives instructions to young men. But the best example you have is the example around men that you grow up with. Men that you grow up around, even your own dad, will show you what you should do and what you should not do and the results behind the choices you make in life. So if you want to be a good father, be a good father to your children. Start building generational fatherly wealth. Be there for your kids. Even when things are not right between you and the woman, even when you two break up, always be there. There's going to always be women that's going to try to manipulate the kids. She's going to weaponize the children, but that don't stop you from being a good dad. That doesn't stop you from trying to communicate with your child. And sometimes you have to make the choice and decision to back away. You know, I'll pay the child support, but the doors are always open for my child to see me, for my son to be there, but always be an example and never give them um never give them the power to hold things over your head bad choices and decisions you made and they just dangle them over your head never give no one the power to have that kind of power over you as long as you're doing the right thing people can falsely accuse you they can refer to you as a deadbeat, but as long as you know that you've done the right thing. But most importantly, that child has to be safe and grow up in the same home as you. And like I said, so many young men are growing up in homes without their dad. The dad is nowhere in their life. You know, um, I shared a story before and it's sad. Um, I'm in Little Caesars, and every time I go in there, there was this guy. He looked like he was about maybe six feet something. And every time I went in there, he would stare at me, just stare, just stare. And I'm like, it got to the point where I felt uncomfortable. And I'm like, what is this dude staring at, right? So I would, while I'm waiting for the food, I'll leave out and go sit in my car, and I'll just wait. And then once the, the pizza is made, I'll go in there and pick it up. But even then, he's behind the counter because he was making the pizzas. And he would just stare at me. So one day I went in there and he was in there by himself. And he said to me, he says, are you my dad? And I'm like, what? what? And so I, I joked it off. I looked around. I'm like, nah, man, it's not me. I ain't do it, man. 
And um, he said that his mom showed him a picture when he was younger of his father. And I reminded him of that picture. And I had asked him like, well, what's your mom's name? And he told me, I said, uh, I don't, don't know her, man. I don't know anybody by that name. And he says, oh, but it really felt bad that he had asked a, a, a perfect stranger, are you my dad? So a young man like that, he should be the example that he never had. You understand? So if he grew up without his dad, if you grow up without your father and you don't like the image that you heard about your dad, then you need to change that. You can be that change. You can be that change by not following in your dad's footsteps. Even when your mom say you're just like your dad. Try not to follow in those footsteps and always do the right thing. Um, many of you have children on your own and you're doing a great job. And I'm not talking about the deadbeats, the ones that get the woman pregnant, leave her to raise that child by herself, refuse to do anything for that child because you think the money's going to the mother, right? I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the guys that's there that are real dads. Keep doing what you're doing as long as you do the right thing, as long as that woman feels safe, that child feels safe, you know, you become that boy's hero. He's going to mimic what he see you do. You have to live by example. Live by the example. The example you want your son, if you don't want your son, good example. And I'm going to end this video. I hear so many so-called black men complain about the police and complain about the white man and how they're treated, right? And how they um, disrespect their manhood and women disrespect their manhood. Well, you have to make that change. You can actually change that by the choices that you make in life. Never govern your life around someone else's idea around what someone else think of you. You be the man that God made you to be. You understand? Learn to stand on your own two feet and never look for a handout. Sometimes you may find yourself in a situation where you're lacking and you may have family members or friends that offer to help and pride will set in and now nah, that's okay. But always put your children first. You know, always put them first. And always be the man that you never had growing up. Be that example. Like I said, when it comes to manhood, when it comes to fatherhood, there's no real instructions. The only instructions I can offer you is just, be a righteous teacher. Live by example. Until next time, I'm fearless.